What is up, guys? Welcome to week number two of Roleplay Swan Song. I'm JP McDaniel, one of the cast members on the show. Joined by the rest of the cast, it's time to find out what they have been up to. Wheat, let's start with you, sir. How's your past week gone? Uh, you know or what? Been, I, ever, I, I don't really have that much to say, but I, I except for one, I'm going to just top on my personal soapbox here. Today, I, I, I uh, saw a fantastic demonstration of why the uh, sentence everything's better with bacon is wrong. Um, mm. Now, I don't suggest that anyone goes and eats at Panda Express, but occasionally mm. one will crave Whoa, their very careful. vinegar e orange chicken. I love it. I love it. I it so, so, you know, my wife went there today, and apparently Panda Express has decided that maybe they can make orange chicken better by adding bacon. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Sounds like a good idea, actually. It's not. Is Bacon it not? Express. I w- if I would have been there, I would have fallen into the trap. But the chicken was terrible. The bacon was great. But the chicken didn't taste right because of the bacon. Oh, they didn't so have all you see, there was like this weird trade-off, and the vinegar didn't come through. I really, yeah. So, word to the wise. Well, they've made like a hundred thousand good choices, so I think they're allowed this one wrong one. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm all it for just it. Proves you know, that they're fallible. That's as all that my I wife pointed true. out, well, you ate all of it, so it was true. I, I did eat all. You of it. You did eat I'm all. I'm guilty. Of it. I'm guilty. Mmm, wheat. I'm guilty. You are the reason. I the felt... reason Panda Express makes bad decisions. <laughs> oh yes, eat more of our bacon, orange Come on. chicken, Mister Reed. Be good. This is terrible. No, no, no. I, no. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like any of this. Ah. Yeah. Uh, did you guys? <laughs> did you guys exactly see like that it. comic from Dorkly today? The how to build a comic or how to build a video game or whatever you're talking about. The origin of everything bad in video yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this. It. This reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen that, you should. Bit. It's yeah. basically just inside the EA offices, which was, I think, yeah. like the number one. Oh, comic. yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. That's good. That's good. Sick burn. <laughs> exactly. Just I stealing the burns burn. from Red. I can't even create them anymore. They're too good. Yep. They're too good. Uh, Wheat, besides, you know, hating bacon or whatever, or whatever you just said about bacon, anything else? <laughs> nah. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to my best friend's wedding uh, this yep. weekend. And I'm very excited for it. It is, uh, it is in Colorado, as in Estes Park. And in fact, it is at the place where The Shining was shot, the Stanley Hotel. Awesome. And as you know, um, Colorado has uh, recently, uh, uh-huh. they have uh, decriminalized marijuana there. And it's recreational now. So, I mean, as a tourist, like, I mean, I have to say, Colorado... They've got a web page set up for tourists who are coming, you know. So, Colorado. So what, so what I'm hearing, weed, is that you're going to get a big stressor for you, right? We're going to get high out of your brain. Weed, now you are. Yeah, I mean, why high wouldn't brain I? And kill family with an axe. Is no. That, oh yes, hearing? yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. excellent. Yeah. Adam, That's a exactly. good plot. That'd be amazing. Have a toke, <laughs> Mister Weed. <laughs> Republicans, I hope you're listening. That'd be uh, after <laughs> injecting three marijuanas, Mr. <laughs> Marcus DJ Wheat Graham murdered uh, his entire family. Yeah, exactly. That's Don't happen. become a statistic. <laughs> Don't. Don't. I'll be the all, anti poster. All work and no weed makes wheat a doughboy. A dull boy. Mm. That's right. So yeah. anyway, that's that's what I got in store for this weekend. Cool. That was good knowing you. <laughs> Yeah, have a <laughs> have a fun time this weekend because I think that's. I, I don't will. think I have to tell you that though. I think it's already. <laughs> it'll be a good time. <laughs> it'll uh, it'll be a good time. Jeff, let's bounce over to you. What's been going on in the world of Mr. Robinson? Um, just chillaxing, doing a lot more streaming right now. Uh, tomorrow I leave for DreamHack Valencia in Spain, which is a a shorter trip. It's just a Friday Saturday tourney, and then. A, hmm. Well, maybe it's Saturday Sunday. Anyways, I come home Sunday, so it's <laughs> not that long. Uh, but Spain's supposed to be beautiful. Other than the fact that it's like 95 degrees there, and I hate heat, and I ah, hate humidity. And I guess they have that as well. That's cold by nice. my Texas estimation. Are you serious? I mean, it's, it... it's been like 97, 98 the past month oh. every day. And you have? Are you near Dallas where it's humid, humid as well? Oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm like an hour from downtown Dallas. So. Oh God. It's not that okay. bad. It's pretty. Well, you're used to it. I'm yeah. not. Yeah, I'm used to it for sure. I'm from the lovely Northwest, where the most severe weather we get is like, oh, that torrential downpour of rain. Anyways, <laughs> it's uh, rough. 
yeah, it's it's not. <laughs> Everything's mild here, but um, so yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. And then when I get back, uh, I'm looking forward to a few more weeks of streaming, and then I have a Warhammer tournament and uh, and other things. But otherwise, um, anything fun to report? Not. Hello. Not really. No, I'm good. Thank you. Cool. No fun in the world of Jeff. It's just all games. Just a lot of StarCraft, I guess. No fun, yeah. only games. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. I know all about that, Jeff. Yeah. We, uh, we hey, visited... You, you, you chose this path, Stephen. That's yeah, true. Yeah, I sure you did. did. Uh, we visited with Stephen and Adam last night uh, on one shot. So I guess in the past 24 hours, gents, is there... Stephen or Adam, anything to report in? Any crazy stories? I don't, I don't know. It's, I don't. <laughs> it's fun to have a hard day at work that feels like a good day. A challenging day. Amen, Stephen. Amen. I know those days. Yeah. I know those days. There you go. I do want to... We should give a shout-out, by the way. Uh, someone in the roleplay family just got engaged. Neil. That's, oh. kind of, that's kind of a big deal. Was that public? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is On now. Facebook and everything, man. Oh, okay. Okay. Because, like... The last time I heard that, it was like, keep it to yourself. And I was just like, yeah, he, he mentioned Jeff, it what like, did you do? There's pictures floating around. It's do on Facebook. Do you remember the time where like we were doing a he state of the game? He only told me not to mention it. I think, you know. Yeah. I mean, do you remember the time Jeff? to say that he was going to. Do you remember we were doing a state of the game? And I think I accidentally said something about you uh, proposing to Anna or something like that. And then I oh. realized what I had said. <laughs> and I didn't know that it had happened yet. Or no, you were on vacation going to propose. That's what it was. Yeah. It was like a day before it had I happened. I remember that. Yeah. And the I like said it on the it internet, internet and I was just like, too. oh my God. <laughs> that was the worst part was you got tattled on. That that happens on the internet. Like you yeah. say something like that and then I get 15 tweets like, JP just did it. He, yep. just, <laughs> he just spoiled the secret. And I'm like, what is this about? Yeah. That happens all the fucking time. That was pretty. Did they all tweet at Anna as well? No, they might have, but it didn't work. Or something like, I think it was. I think it what, happened. What kind of jackass would you or... have to be to tweet about that? Be like, oh yeah, your boyfriend's gonna propose to you. Ha -ha. It, it's the same person Adam, that spoils Game of Thrones for people. Like that's There's the yeah. internet. I'm gonna spoil your life. They just for you. don't care. Yeah, they're <laughs> spoiler warning. They're backseat Spoilers. lifers and spoiler lifers. Yeah, yeah they're life are. spoilers. But anyway, shout out to Neil. Congrats. It's really yeah. awesome. He's with a lovely lady. Congrats, Neil. Uh, well, I guess we can. Go ahead and start. I guess before we do, who shout out to the community for kind of rallying behind the show? Uh, just yeah. an immense amount of content the past week. Yeah. Uh, whether like it's really some some very high quality nerding going on. I'm I'm real impressed. Yeah, man. Radio it's, broadcast quality was so like the so, the music was fucking perfect. Yeah. The guys, yeah. British the voice, voice was the, amazing. The oh, so good. It had uh, it was really good. Yeah, so for any fan that might be watching that is interested in doing stuff like that, I've seen a lot of like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to like step on the GMs, like stuff. Just as long as you don't contradict anything I've already said in the game, just fucking do it, do it, go crazy. I don't care. I'll I'll roll it into the game. Yes. Doesn't matter. And yes. just so you know, the the guy that wrote that news report, I uh, wired in one of the things he talked about into my one of my goals. We have three goals as characters, so. Uh, for anyone that's out there doing that kind of stuff, and including that guy, like uh, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to try to weave that into the story and get you guys involved as well, since that's part of the spirit of Swan Song. So, yeah, yeah, it's okay. there. Already Definitely. did it. Uh, Done. Uh, yeah. Well, Done. I guess Adam, take it over. Take it away. Okay. So, so between the sessions, uh, I had my little GM Adventure Time session to <laughs> move things uh, along. I do that every time a month has passed in game or we finish an adventure, so you guys do a mission. Uh, and then as a result of that, I posted some missions for people to vote on. And it looks like your assignment uh, for this mission is uh, designate 15-221-N4. You're being employed by the Zimenez Shipyards Research Division. Uh, details of this mission are an experimental ship has tragically been lost to internal failure as well as all hands on board. Scavenging rights are presently offered for the ship, provided the core can be returned to Zimenez shipyard. Um, so the last place that this ship was seen, uh, I guess where the testing was done, is near the uh, near the planet... Uh, 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 ah, Froes, which is in the same system as um, two of our characters are from. The Oninsa and Majid uh, planets are in that system. I know it well. Yeah. Uh, so your payment is scavenging rights on a destroyer-class vessel, which is 
pretty big money, and then 10k for your troubles. Um, so you guys are currently in the Gunhild system. You just finished getting paid, and uh, it is January the 13th of the year 3,200. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Um, well, did we divvy up the 20,000 credits? Did we just... Yep. Okay. Yep. So everyone's got 5k extra credits. Uh, everyone has 5k total if you just split the um, uh, the money you know, evenly. Um, the ship needs to get paid. Uh, sometime in the next two weeks, uh, you need to pay Sunbeam uh, 8,220 credits, um, and then there's a maintenance fee every month. If you miss it, it's a gamble on whether or not it'll have a negative effect on the ship, but I, I take note every time you don't pay your maintenance fees. Okay. So yeah, I think we should also uh, got... just split up the cost of the ship and maintenance, right, and then whatever is left after that, we split four ways too, right? What is that? Yeah, what was the cost again, Adam? I know you so, had math. Yeah, it's, uh, it's okay. It's uh, 8,220. Uh, that represents payment and interest to uh, your good friends at Sunbeam. And that's then, monthly. Yeah, that's monthly. And then you've got uh, 3,230 credits to pay for maintenance on the ship. Now, if you miss that, no one's going to come calling for it, but there's more and more chance that the ship will break down or something important will fail if you don't pay it. Sure. So uh, uh, and then how are we going to do each show in terms of, is that a week in game time? Is that a month in game time? What do you want to do? It depends. Like travel, tr like I I'd like to track it very like specifically in game. Like no time will pass between sessions because mm -hmm. time is so important to this game in terms of getting stuff paid, how much life support you have on the ship. Travel time is going to be the biggest suck of time. It'll be like because it, it takes six days to travel from one hex to another, and then four days to skim fuel if you don't want to pay for it. So I mean, getting just from Gunhild to uh, Vafai, where the those three planets are, uh, is going to take you quite a while, like almost a month. Okay. Now, Adam. Yes. Operating cost on the Swan Song says it's yep. six hundred credits per day. That's extra crew. That's how much per person per crew you you like you pay if you hired on because the the ship can take uh, on two more people. You'd have to yeah. pay them that that much. Okay. Cool. So we are we're not just paying six hundred a day just for mm -hmm. the the luxury of running nope. the Swan Song. No. Nope. That's okay. how much. That's how much if you were crew members on the Swan Song but didn't own it. So two thousand eight hundred sixty credits a month. Split four ways. What? Uh, or no, that's that's it's, what it's eleven thousand four hundred and fifty credits a month. Right, and that's yeah, two thousand eight hundred and sixty credits. Oh. Two thousand six hundred and eighty is what you said. Two thousand eight hundred sixty. <laughs> two thousand eight hundred. We'll get this right one time. <laughs> I've got a spreadsheet. Um. Okay. So I mean, it doesn't really us, matter. We could either so play that us, individually, or we can just pay the full eleven k and then split the remaining. That's like, what I'm saying. Pay the 11k and split the remaining. Okay. So we got 20,000, right? Yeah. So we'll pay so the 11,450. Okay. So just your minimum payment and the and the maintenance. Okay. Where are you getting the maintenance done? Oh shit. Is there like <laughs> is that just done at? Uh... Any any spaceport can do it. So any TL4 higher system can do that. So can I make a navigation to, roll and find one? You could. You could pop back to Andoni if you want. It's the only planet in the Gunhold system that can do that. Or you can jump over to uh, Varvaresos, uh, which is in uh, Sector 306, and the planet Strophios can, uh, can take care of that for you. I think we should head that way. Now, let me we see should head in the direction this. of where we're going for this mission, right? And then yeah, do it there. You're going, yeah, you're going to 304. Okay, so. let's do that. Yeah, so that's on the way, right? Yep. No? Yep. Yes. 306 is Vavareso, so that's only one hex away. So it's going to take us six days to hop over? Yep. Yeah, you want to do 304 that? 304 is two hexes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's do it. Okay, so someone is going to have to make a navigation uh, check for, uh, for that. The base travel time is six days. Uh, you guys have charts that are less than a year old, but if you know we get to 3,201, you haven't updated your charts, then you'll get a penalty. Um, but for right now, you have up-to-date charts, so it's a standard difficulty uh, navigation test, and it's difficulty, uh, let's see, it's difficulty 7. Okay, I've, I've played five actual different systems since the last time we played. Am I just rolling, <laughs> yeah. am I just rolling it's, a d20? Uh, this one is 2d6. That's plus, right. Okay. Uh, plus navigation, plus uh, intelligence. Uh, and if your navigation, if you've just put one point into it, you don't add yeah, my I just have zero navigation and zero okay. bonus int. So okay. Yeah. So I'm just now if you if you want to just just to give you an option, obviously you're you're in a safe position right now. But if you want to trim the course, 
Um, you can fake a higher drive rating, uh, so you can essentially cut the travel time in half, but it increases the difficulty of the roll by two, so it would go up to nine. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that on your very first outing, but it's an option for later if you really need to get somewhere fast. Okay, noted. Uh, I'm going to make my navigation <laughs> check then. Seven. Noted. I think that was right on the money, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, okay. So not failing means you don't have to roll on the failed navigations table. Oh, um, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, okay, so you, you leave the Gunhild system. Um, basically, the way that spike drives work is you have to leave the gravitational pull of the, the star that, that controls the system, and then once you've done that, at the edge of the, uh, at the, edge of the system, you can jump to, uh, to a system within spike drive range, which for you is uh, one. currently one hex. Yeah. Now, you can do that twice before you have to refuel because you have the extra fuel supplies in your, yeah. uh, in your ship. So you guys jump to the Varvareso system without any trouble. Uh, it takes six days. So we're at uh, nearing the end of January. Okay. Um, Did you say we are uh, we're getting our maintenance done on Strophios? Yeah, because oh, okay. I mean, unless you want to go back to Andoni, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted yeah. to be sure I knew the right the right planet. Yep. Uh, Adam, real quick, yes. last session was December thirty one ninety nine. Hmm. Hmm. So, total revenue. <laughs> Wait, and it's July. <laughs> it's it's January. Oh, January. Yeah. Are you spread shaving it up, Stephen? Yeah, man. I'm 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 making us a mid maxing. Uh, Victor's yeah. mid maxing. Well, it's 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 important to have someone doing accounting because, yeah, you you don't want to lose track of that stuff. When was the last time we paid those guys? Usually, we just kind of lie to you and just tell you we did. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got my own. Yeah. So paid twice uh, that I think. Paid the max. So the oh. um, the other thing to keep track of is that your ship has enough um, like supplies for 104 person days, basically. So for you guys, it's 26 days apiece. So you've just used up... Um, oh, are we up to 104? Six, six of those. It's whatever the... You have enough for two weeks for the full crew. So... I thought it was 86 person days. Is it 86? Okay. 80, 84, which comes down whatever to 21, I, yeah, what, whatever 21 days there. for the full crew, which is actually three weeks for the full crew. And we just used up six times four, yeah. right? So twenty-four. So we're down to sixty yeah. person days. So that's uh, air supply, uh, food and water, that kind of thing. Um, is that so, is eighty-four our max? Uh, yeah, that's that's like when you refuel. Now you can you can buy more when you go to get your ship maintained. They cost twenty yeah. credits per person per day. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. So they're pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys do for six days while you're in drive space? Like, how much money do we ship- have in our account after split four ways? Uh, so I'm looking at this, uh, you know, it, or eight, 8,550 split four ways. Well, uh, well, damn, Mr. Higgins, you're, you're, you're a wizard with the math. Uh, you're exactly <laughs> right. Split four ways. It's 2137.5, of course. So that's what we have then, right? Yeah. Each of us gets that. Now, of course, we've still got this 3230 hanging out that we're going to drop on uh, Stradivarius 4 or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> Strophios. Strophios. Wait, so we got yeah. how much? 2137.5, <laughs> my friend. We made out pretty well. Uh, then I guess, Adam, now that I have a compad, I kind mm-hmm. of look to the group. What's the, what's the TL of this place? Four. So it would have a shop for stuff that I'd want to buy? Yep. Yep. Now, I mean, it, it depends on the government, what's legal and what's not legal, right? Like, if you went to Andonia and you were like, I would like to buy 7,000 machine guns, please, they would be like, please go directly to hell. Um, mm-hmm. If you can find a planet with a different government or, like, less strict control, then, yeah, you can buy all kinds of stuff. And what's the general gist of this place in terms of that? Well, why don't you roll a culture roll for me? Um, sure. Do you have culture? Do you have culture spacer or... Any culture skills that would uh, apply? I have criminal culture. Criminal. Okay, so you can find out what the, the sort of criminal. Can I help uh, him or assist him with that roll? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm rolling a two d six plus one, and he's taking the bonus of a plus one. Yeah, and he'll get roll. a bonus if you get a seven or better. <laughs> six. All right, so Higgs, you uh, yeah, you, you maybe you've never been to the Barbaresso <laughs> system before or something, but you don't yeah, you don't have any helpful. So I'm just two d six, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you have criminal culture, you don't have to suspect anything. Okay, so basic information. So, um, Strophios uh, is generally considered a place if you want to if you want to run a con, 
that's a good place to do it. Uh, it's not, there's not a lot of um, illicit trade there because it's considered kind of a pilgrimage site. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a religious organization called the New Prophet Christians, and they've set up uh, like a church there, and it's, it's considered sort of holy land for them. Um, the planet, you need a pressure mask to be outside, and you need heavy um, uh, like temperature control gear, so like sealed suits, stuff like that. There's no native biosphere. It's like Hoth, basically, but, but colder. Um, but all the people that live there, it has millions of inhabitants. They live in these big bubble cities uh, on, on the planet. Um, so, you know, if you want to go there to, to like run a con on some, some travelers or you want to rip off some religious people, that's a place to do it. But, you know, it's not like a, I mean, buying weapons and stuff might be tricky there. Um, no armor. Was there armor? Is that a good answer? <laughs> I wasn't mm. sure. I, weapons and armor kind of fall under the same category. They're not illegal, but it, it'll be tricky to find someone who can sell it to you, right? Because there's not a lot of conflict there. Unlike, you know, Andoni or Majid or like one of those other planets that's currently undergoing some civil strife, this planet's pretty peaceful for the most part. Gotcha. Um, yeah, basically they're, they're just concerned with keeping the bubble cities going so that people don't freeze or, or choke. <laughs> okay, then knowing that, I guess I'm not interested in going out and purchasing things, so I just kind of resume my muscle... Uh, position and just shadow them make sure they're safe uh adam was yeah. there any way for me to because when we killed randy we, i assume grabbed some sort of way to oh, access yeah, you, his bank account or extra yeah credits yeah, yeah or, totally now you can't you can do it do you want to do it before you leave uh gunhild system or do you want to wait till you get to varvaresos because when you're in like spike space you're you're shifted out of normal reality so you have to connect to a comm satellite when you get to a populated system um, the communication system in in this universe is more like kind of like the age of sail than it is like Star Trek. Like if you are two systems apart, you can only communicate in bursts and it's carried by like a mail ship. So a mail ship will load up on comms as it leaves, deliver them when it arrives, and then move from system to system dropping off messages. So a message from like the Parides system to the Stavro system will take like months to travel. Wow. Um, the exchange has satellites and, and stations in every system. Uh, they maintain kind of the mail and the bank there, so you can pay your debts at any, any system. Okay. But uh, you'll have to wait until you get there to, to do that. So I, I would say if we can retcon it this one time, and then because I wasn't aware that oh, we yeah. were going to be in the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's there. There, you don't you have any like pressure on you. Randy didn't have any like bounty hunter friends really to like chase you, so you're you're okay. Um, okay. So before you leave, you want to try and access his. Uh, yeah, what what this, role is this? Stuff. This is a computer uh, role. It'd be computer, yeah. I, do I know that? Uh, we would I understand that your character is better at this than I am? Fuck yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I go over and uh, I make sure that like you're alone and uh, you're part of the spaceship wherever that's at. I'm just like, uh, hey, P Piani, I got this. Uh, I got this this car. Can you take a look at this? It might have some uh, some extra credits on it from Randy. I get half. I mean, <laughs> technically, I look. I you lean can in. Try I'm just to like... roll the fucking dice and 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 maybe see if you can decrypt it. But I'm sure that it's got a triple bypass well, uh, macro virus that's just going to destroy everything on it anyway. You can give it to me, and I'll take care of it. And then give me half of the motherfucking credits. I look at you. I kind of like flip the card back and forth in my hand. I'm just like, well, what what happens if I fail? <laughs> are, you, are you asking me? Whoever wants to answer. <laughs> it, it'll be worthless. Do, would I know that, Adam, or no? So it depends on how much uh, security Randy paid for on his exchange account. Like high level ones, it's like there's like three passwords and a bio scan. Uh, lower level ones, it's like enter a four digit pin code. And if you do it wrong 27,000 times, it'll blow up the card. Like it, I mean, it depends on how well off Randy was and how much he cared about security. I, I look at Piani, I'm just like, well, I mean, I I guess you know about it already, so. Can, it's fucking can, Randy. Can, How can, many? We, can we do 70, 70, 30? 70 30? Does that sound better? Sounds better for me, but does that work for you? 50 50. No, those numbers don't quite add up in my. All right, you have a good day, Miss Piani. You missed out on some credits. There's probably 300 fucking credits on the thing. Well, those 300 are going to be all mine. <laughs> walk off. Have it, have it your way. <laughs> 300 credits, it's like, like 30 10-credit hookers. Exactly. So I go, uh, 
I go off to wherever I can and, okay. and do this computer security check. Just a straight... Okay. I'm not trained, now, so it's just a 2D6, right? Okay. So now, Piani, does it occur to you to maybe warn Higgs to like try and cover his tracks? Because if, if he does trip an alarm... They're going to look for the nearest, like, the com port it was sent from, which is the swan song, right? So the exchange, they don't like when people try to screw with people's accounts. They're all about, like, maintaining solid banking standards. He may be my friend, but I still want the leverage. If he fucks up, it's on him. <laughs> so I you don't wanna... think I'm going to say a fucking word. So you'd rather be there to clean up the mess than... Sure. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Okay, Higgs, uh, go ahead and make your computer roll there. What, what, what am I trying to beat here? Um, basically, a, a a seven is the is the default, and the better you get, the okay. the better you do. Oh, Ooh. you okay. should have fucking listened to me, you fucking hoser. So I like type in the computer, and then you see like some red screen start flashing. <laughs> I'm just like shit. Uh, All right, so you you yeah you slot you slot the chip, and it's like an identification card, so it it connects to the nearest exchange uh, beacon. And uh, syncs the data. You got to wait for the little progress bar game. And then once it's synced, uh, it asks you for a password. Um, and then you try to use, I guess, the ship's computer to like bypass the password. You just start typing like hack yeah. chip to, to what, <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever I would my knowledge would uh, yeah. grant me to do. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the ship's got some decompression or decompression uh, equipment on it, but it's not great. Um, okay. So you uh, yeah you mess around with it and you just you start getting errors. Um, can you make a uh, make a luck save for me? Just uh, d20 against 14 or yeah, higher. Yeah, against yeah, 14 or higher. Six. <laughs> okay, so it, it locks the it locks the card. It says, "Please visit a local exchange uh, consulate for more information." But yeah, you're locked out of the card. It's okay. not use, useless. It's not burned out. But you'll have to go in and convince someone that you're Randy to be able to get it. To okay, work. I I, uh, I take the card and I go over to Piani and I I flick you the card. Piani, I'm just like, you know, there was uh, there was actually six thousand credits on it, so uh, fuck off, <laughs> and I just kind of walk off. Awesome. <laughs> the okay. card is now at your feet if you want to do anything with it. Wait, but yeah, I'll take it. You never know. All right, write it down on your uh, your inventory there. So, uh, Victor and uh, Mr. Sicarian, are you guys? Do you want to do anything? I mean, you've got six days of downtime. Let's let's talk a little bit about what you guys do, what the inside of the ship looks like, kind of what your quarters are like. I'm I'm curious about kind of what I mean, being stuck in hyperspace for six days with three other people. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see what you do, what you're up to. Uh, I guess my my quarters have like research charts and papers like plastered all over the wall. Like some people would have like pinups, and I've got like you know charts of <laughs> of you know like mm -hmm. uh, prices of exotic goods and like not 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 goods specifically like commercial but like uh scientific goods basically. do you do you have like a like rubbings of what's the alien race that you studied oh yeah what what is that uh the, like scale the scaly bird people uh sh the shindelia okay so do you have like sh shindelian like like yeah ruin I, rubbings I, I think i have stuff? rubbings of ancient shindelian uh <laughs> like cool. like architectural uh like engravings that I'm I'm trying to translate in my spare time. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Uh, and I guess like I spent a lot of time during during our trip like figuring out our accounting because I'm really interested in that. Do you have the business and, skill? Uh, no. <laughs> so, Mr. Sicarian, are you are you helping uh, your scientist friend with the uh, with his accounting with his learning of the accounting uh, of the ship? Would he ask me? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I don't even think it would occur to me to ask. Mm. You just but, are a scientist. You must be good at math. Yeah, exactly. I'm. I'm just like putting numbers together and inputting them in a machine. And but like, if he sees it and he's like, "That's totally wrong. What the hell are you doing?" Then I, it's no problem. I'm like, "Oh, really? Like, you think I've 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 incorrectly accounted for the amortization of our, you know, EBITDA or whatever?" <laughs> You're not maximizing your integers. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so you're working, you have your little side project of, of translating. What about you, Mr. Sicarian? What do you do while the ship is in transit? He's very much so a minimalist. Like, his room is uh, bare bones. There's, you know, simple artwork collected perhaps from our journeys, but just nothing nothing super amazing. It's extremely well kept. The bed is always precisely made. Like, you couldn't find a crease in the in the sheets or anything is if it, you tried. Is it, 
Is it like a military fold, or is it just like nicely kept? Uh, not necessarily military, but everything is in its place. Everything's perfect, and uh, he doesn't. He's not like a. He's not a super big socialite, so he just well, not with not with the crew or anything like that. So he spends a lot of time in his room reading. Uh, Onitsa books, just of you know, like from their their uh, poets and and writers and stuff like that. And then he comes out a few times a day and and just kind of makes his rounds and sees if he's needed anywhere and he'll play like their version of chess or whatever like that. But for the most part, he's just working out, meditating, and quiet into himself. Yeah, regicide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <Cool>. while uh, mm. <coughs> while. God, I think I'm going to sneeze again. Uh, Sneezing feels good. He's got, he's got the space sickness. Ah. Uh, sp- yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, like, my my business exploits aren't going to take me that long. And uh, this translation, you know, I've been stuck on it for months. So I just, it's kind of like a stress ball for me almost. But what I'm really interested in is actually doing research into Zemenix. Because we're working for them now. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, and if I recall correctly, uh, we discovered that the Cultural Protection Force on Undoni made a deal with Zemenix shipyards that it wasn't done in money, done. but it was done in some kind of future payout. And I'm very curious about the fact that there's this experimental ship that's been lost uh, so close to Insa, which, as we all know, uh, has a little bit of internal strife on it. Is that right? Yep. I mean, yeah. the... the- the, the royal the gov- family the of governments, is, yeah, yeah, the the royal the royal family would have you believe everything is under control, but yeah, word word on the on the space street is that they're they're fighting uh, pretty hard with some rebels. The rebels have control of the like PL five technology, but there's not that many of them. So when they get hit, it's usually like terrorist strikes with quantum weapons and stuff. So nice. they're they're yeah they're working to fight you know numbers against technology. Hmm. So yeah. That's that's what I'm like researching into. Is there any way I can like do research into that? Well, while you're in uh, drive space or, or whatever, you don't have access to the kind of internet of the sector. You don't have comms connection, yeah. so I mean, you don't really have anything to do research with. Yeah, uh, but that's something I, you could definitely do when you arrive in. Just- yeah, I think at, when we arrive, like maybe before we arrived, I've like. You know, put some pins in the wall and like have like different colors of string tying different <laughs> systems together. And I'm like, ah, very curious, very curious. Yeah. So mm. you you guys all have your own uh, like full rooms on the ship. Um, what other facilities does the does the ship have? Um, I would say, well, uh, you know, Piani's room's pretty simple and plain too. And a lot of times uh, she's just uh, in there, maybe trying to hone her. Or better understand her precognitive abilities and uh, trying to exercise those and make them better. But being that uh, she likes security and, and all that, you know, she will plop herself down in the comms room, which of course has a closed circuit, uh, you know, video system throughout the swung song. And she will often just time, you know, just watch the other crew members. <laughs> okay. Do the other crew members know about this? No, oh, no. <laughs> Do you, do you guys know about this? Uh, I don't know that Victor Kovacs really cares. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I would say that... Um, I forgot my name for a second. I, I would say that Wilbur doesn't uh, necessarily know does, or, or he doesn't really care. His room is, is lined with uh, the Sunbeam Multistellar annual uh, swimsuit calendar. <laughs> that, uh, it's all, yeah, it's all, it's all like people dressed up in in like really corny kind of vegas like cowboy outfits and like yeah like borderline racist but you wouldn't even know because it's like several thousand years from its its origin like people dressed up as indians and stuff yeah totally like western cheese and i've got uh i've also got a bunch of log books that are basically log books but they're all of the cons that i've ran and, and how they fucked up so i study them uh nightly mm. to make sure that i don't have the same fuck ups occur again mm. Yeah, trying to Eggs keep track of all your well, I'm always trying to run the perfect crime, uh, and I haven't quite got there yet. So, <laughs> cool. All right. It's also um, the biggest uh, ship. Uh, so, do you guys quarters. do you guys eat eat together? Um, I mean, the system. I would say we have like, like a communal sh- mess hall. Yeah. Well, yeah, the ship has like nutrition generators and gives you like blocks of stuff and some slime and and like kind of bad coffee. Um, make it sound so appealing. You, oh, it's delicious. Um, 
But do you, yeah, like everything do you guys, the body needs. Do you guys meet together to eat your tasty weed, or do you like go to your own rooms? I, I would say I Wilbur has no problem I eat socializing with there. Yeah, I'd eat. Yeah, I, I probably have like a big tome out, and I'm like, you know, flipping through it and like crunching on my tasty wheat as I as I flip. So how how long have you guys been? I mean, not long, I guess, because the swan song you haven't even made a, a single payment on it. How, do you do you make any effort to get to know each other during these like periods of extended isolation, or is it just kind of like? Oh yeah, w- Wilbur's Mister H- or Higgs is the uh, the constant socialite on the yeah. ship. Probably one of the few. I would I would say. Mm. But I don't know about the others. <laughs> I know a lot about you from watching you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like uh, Victor would definitely try to like strike up small talk with everybody. I always talk. I I'm not like standoffish, but I don't go out of my way to to bond or anything like that. He's very professional. Yeah. So just talk about the mission. Yeah. Yeah, but if they start talking to me about something, it's not like I give them a stone cold look and walk away. I I, I talk. I'm nice enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, Karen, you said you were from Gunhild, right? Yes, a planet called Onitsa. You're, you're, uh, uh, v- Victor, you're from Gunhild. He's from uh, Vafai. Who's from Vafai? Uh, so Vafai is the system. Oh, Vafai is the system. Yeah. Yeah, and but it's this system. system. Yeah. Majid, Froes, and Onitsa. Uh, and we want to go to Froes, right? Yep. Yeah, like, uh, like, Sicarian, why did you, why did you leave in the first place? What, what pulled you away from home? Was it, I mean, you know, we, we got saw, we all saw the news feeds. Was there something about the war that was, you know, pushing you away? The royal families, uh, make it a little bit harder for, men of my trade to kind of uh, do what they want, I guess, but um, truth be told, uh, I'm actually pretty happy we're talking about the, the region, because there's been, a, I just listened to a newscast, and they've been having a, a, a raised issue with Blue Fever or something like that, and that's one of my pet projects. I'm not a big fan. What, What's uh, Blue Fever? What is Blue Fever? So, um, Higgs, you've definitely heard of Blue Fever before. Never um, mind. <laughs> Though, though, I mean, you can still play like you don't know. So, blue, blue fever uh, is Higgs. You know this. The last time you heard about it, um, actually, Randy had mentioned it as like being the next big thing. He was like, "We're gonna, we're gonna smuggle blue fever, man. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a million credits, and that the, the Madari syndicate was gonna hook him up with this, this like package that he was gonna, he was gonna smuggle." Okay. Have I ever ran blue fever before? Would you say? No. Is- it. The last time you heard about it, it was like an experiment. Like it wasn't even street ready. Okay. Um, but apparently, Mr. Sicarian has heard otherwise. Okay. <laughs> so, go, going so, back in, Stephen, what do you ask? Sicarian, you were saying that, what was it you were saying about Blue Fever? Yeah, there's been some problems with a, th- a drug called Blue Fever on my, my home planet, Nizza. It's on the mm. newscast, and uh, the last time I had dealt with that stuff, it was more experimental than anything else, but I knew that it was going to be problems for the people uh, that I care about. Now you said like uh, the the royal family made it hard for like a man of your trade. Were you a were you a you know personal bodyguard back on Oninsa, or did it, was that a more recent development? No, you know me as I am. Uh, I'm a professional, and if someone hires me, I'll, I'll go for it. But of course, on the home planet, it's a little bit different. The uh, civil war means that brothers fight brothers, so to speak. So uh, the royal family is trying to keep it under wraps and get it under control, but a lot of times what that means is a lot of black bags and people disappearing, and some of those people have people that care about them quite a bit, so needless to say, there's a lot of heartache for me back at home, but also people that uh, are in need, especially with the drug running rampant. Oh, space Jesus, Sicarian. I, I didn't realize it was that hard. That sounds really rough. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, Higgs you- kind of picks up the, the whatever the mush is and just like drops it back into the bowl, completely uninterested <laughs> in the food, and he's like, you know, uh, running that blue fever is pretty good money. If uh, if there if that's, uh, I don't know how you feel about that, Mister S, but uh, could make some good change there. I'll see whoever is getting this blue fever out burned. So I would well, recommend we stay away from it. I guess we'll be staying away from that then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't sell drugs. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mr. Morality. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so, so Piani, maybe you're not there. Maybe you're in the, like, the CCTV room, like, watching everyone else eat. And you, uh, you can hear the, the conversation. And, yeah, you know a little bit about Blue Fever, too. Um, it's, it's something that some of the, the Mandarinate, like, they had they'd been experimenting with buying it and, and sort of feeding it to their, their uh, workers to keep them, like, complacent and uh, hooked. So, um, I mean, upon hearing this information, is there, and, and, you know, seeing that, uh, you know, Mr. Sicarian is, is obviously, um, you know, not okay with this. Maybe, uh, when there's a private opportunity, uh, I pull him aside and, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, so let's, let's jump to that scene. So Sicarian later after you've eaten, um, what are you doing when Piani comes to talk to you? Uh, probably just walking back to my room or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it can be any time later. You guys are, there's a week of travel. Okay, so maybe you guys meet in a corridor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe I, I stop Mrs. Carey and we have, a, like, a, a brief conversation just about the, the blue fever. I tell him, you know, I tell him what I, what I heard. And, uh, you know, I suggest that may, maybe there's a way to, to use that information to, to destroy it. What is it that you know? Like, what do you tell me? About about the sort of the trades and oh okay yeah right because you were talking about it I heard it from you I say uh well yeah I appreciate you bringing this information to me I mean most certainly it's I'm here to do a job I'm I'm hired to help you guys out and I accept that my own personal agenda would sideline for now but if this information becomes relevant to something that we need to do then yes I would love that well I mean is there anything in the information that uh that you know, that we heard that would be, you know, that we could use to sort of disrupt that. Cause I know about his hatred towards this shit, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, I mean, do you have culture? You roll culture criminal for me. Sure. Yeah. 2d6. Uh, and I don't think I have a, a one on that. Yeah. Let me double check. I have just on persuade. Um, a four. Okay. All right. So you you don't really know much else. You know that somehow the mandarinate is getting it in in enough supply to feed it to people. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know who their connection is. Maybe if you put you know boots on the on the ground and like asked around, maybe you started okay. uh, meeting with your contacts, you could figure something out. So I at least share like you know what I know about it and let uh, Mrs. Carey know that you know we're sort of on the same side as far as as far as that's concerned. So if an opportunity comes to potentially disrupt these operations due to the information we have, I would jump on that. So you guys have kind of a, a shared intersection of enemy. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Okay. Um, so is there anything else that you guys want to do in transit? Any other conversations you want to have, Higgs? Is there anything you want to talk to any of the other crew about? No. I kind of just idle around different uh, places in the ship, have small talk, whatnot, but yeah. nothing important. Sure. I kick okay. my feet up on the dash of the uh, of the driver's seat and mutter to myself, "Ah, oh, maybe it's the past blue perfect." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you emerge in uh, at the edge of the Varvareso system. Um, it's a system with a fair number of planets, but only one of them is uh, currently occupied by by human inhabitants, and that's the planet Stropios. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned before, it's like a thick atmosphere, frozen planet, several times bigger than Earth. Um, it's got these bubble cities. They're, they're pre-tech bubble cities. So most of the time that uh, the, the, these people are trying to maintain them, because if there are certain parts that if they failed completely, they'd be irreplaceable, and lots of people would have to be refugees to other systems or, or whatever. Um, but it is well known as a, a sort of a pilgrimage site for the, uh, for the new prophet. So when you guys arrive in system, uh, your, uh, your your comms panel lights up and connects and downloads all the information from the uh, like local news and, and that kind of thing. Um, most of it is just religious spam. It's like, welcome to the system, Pilgrim. Here's sites you might want to visit. And um, you, know, you get the, the, the weekly like, Sunbeam multi-stellar newsletter, the, the rustler that like, tells you about deals and like, looking to upgrade, try our freighters and like, all this like, news. Do I see any good deals? Uh, no, not really. Okay. I mean, it's like... Yeah, it's like you're driving around in a brand new car and you're listening to the radio and all you hear is like commercials for another <laughs> car you didn't buy. Gotcha. Oh my god. So, Catalytic carbonizers are uh, 37% <laughs> more in demand. Come on down to Tashi Station. 
Exactly. Um, so yeah, so just a lot of like the the usual business. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean it's fairly easy to set a course for uh, for the Vafai system. Away you go. Uh, we, while we're while we're heading to the Vafai, mm-hmm. I want to, uh, or rather, no, no, not while we're heading to Vafai. Where Strophios. we're flying. Well, yeah, where yeah, where we're heading to Strophius, I want to connect to the network and see what I can find out about the Cmenex. Okay, so and on your way to the Andoni. Uh, on your way, mark another two days of uh, supplies. It doesn't cost you any fuel or anything, but um, yeah, it takes 48 hours to get from one end to the system. Are you keeping That's track of all times, that, Steven? Yeah, Steven's... That's two I'm, times four, right? Steven, so I'm wait. making you in charge of the supplies. <laughs> yeah, so that's eight, so we're down to 52 person days of life support. We'll just there say that go. Steven's the quartermaster for the Swan Song. Let's totally. Um... And uh, yeah, and you've got enough fuel for you got enough hydrogen fuel for one more spike jump, but yep. I would not suggest making. No, we'll want to re. We'll want to refuel. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, there's no. Uh, I mean, maybe there's a delay because there's a lot of like traffic uh, around the uh, the planet, but there's no, um, you know, no penalties or anything. No, no need to you know, worry about the the government uh, in yeah. this system. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you guys are able to, to dock at a uh, one of the bubble cities that has a, a big enough starport. Uh, and while you're here, you can uh, yeah, you can get your ship uh, resupplied. So, do you want to buy more uh, life support and stuff? Definitely. Yeah. So, I guess yeah. we'll buy up to our maximum, which is currently okay. eighty four, right? Okay. So per person day, it costs you twenty credits. So we're 52 to 84 is 32 person days. So 20 credits times 32. I'm opening a calculator. 20 okay. times 32 is 640 credits. Divided by four is, gentlemen, each of us kicks in 160 and we're golden. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. 160? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now you're also going to pay your maintenance fee for the, for the month, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Maintenance fee is paid. The uh, local techs, thank you for your uh, your assistance. There's like a Sunbeam official like shop here you can you can go to. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and they they uh, they fill up your uh, supplies and they get you uh, you all sorted out with payment and maintenance. Now, do you want to buy more uh, like one more jump of fuel? How much does that cost? Yeah. Um, it's pretty cheap, I think. Uh, let me take a look. Your refueling costs. Oh, it only costs a hundred credits. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Six, so twenty-five each. Yep. Well, because yeah, it's I just, it's just ref, refined so, hydrogen, right? Okay, I offer to pay for that for full, and as I'm paying for it, I give Piani a wink. <laughs> <laughs> you got the next fucking twelve, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well. Probably the next sixty, to be honest. Uh huh. Anyways, <laughs> I saw the okay. flash and red screen, my friend. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, Victor, do you want to make that that uh, research roll? Yeah, is that like? Uh, it depends on what skill you want to do. Like, if you want to just dig around on the internet, you'd use computer. Um, if you want to uh, ask contacts, you'd use a culture skill. Uh, you know what? Like. Where are we stopped? We're on a planet, right? Yeah, yeah you're but, in one of the bubble uh, cities on the, the like ice planet. I mean, like my my traveler culture would probably help me with like general. If you just want to meet stuff. someone who has the information that you want, you can roll, and we can we can generate that NPC. It can just be a yeah, I want to I want to check that out. See if so. I can where do you where do you go to meet a uh, meet another traveler? Uh, so this well, just to just to kind of to so traveler doesn't just mean like a person who travels. There's like a traveler society. It's like hmm. a uh, multi-system group of people who are like explorers and mercenaries, kind of like a guild that you you belong to, and you kind of earn your way in. And then yeah. once you're in, you can go to like traveler bars and stuff. And you're yeah. like, hey, I'm part of the club. It's like being in the like Elks Club. Whatever. So it's kind of like the Admirals Club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I guess I'm going to like... Mm, I feel a little flush with cash right now. Like we had yeah. a pretty good haul. I'm I'm richer than I've been in a long, long time. I think I'm gonna go like put on my nicest space jumpsuit and head yeah. to like you know the Ritzy Admirals Club. 
So mechanically, just so you know, the, the culture skill uh, traveler, I'll read it for you. So it's unique in that it can only be taken at level zero and never raised. But it can mm. substitute for any planet's cultural skill, but represents only a casual basic knowledge of many different worlds. It's useless yeah. some worlds that have been completely cut off from interstellar contact and grants no linguistic ability. Right. So you just kind of know a little bit about every planet. You know maybe somebody on every, every world. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, you, you know, I, I'd like to find someone who looks like wealthy, like they have business connections, like they maybe, you know, deal in, you know, ships or ship supplies. So I'm looking for, for some kind of like high, you know, high society bar that's located near to some kind of spaceport okay. spot. Yeah, no problem. Fine. Um, so do I just do roll you, 2d6? Yeah, so you go to a, you go to a bar and, uh, and start, like, how do you, do you like ask around? Or are you looking for a particular person that you know to be here? Because you can do that um, with culture. You can just be like, oh, I know a person in this world. Man, I don't, I don't feel like I really know anybody who has connections to Jimenez. Or, mm, so um, you're, just, you're just generally digging around? Uh, you know, maybe like I heard that there were a couple of people who used to deal with Andoni mm -hmm. who operated out of uh, this is Sarsaparilla, Strophios. Strophios. <laughs> And, uh, and like, I'm, I'm trying to sort of see if I can find one of these people. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and roll your, uh, your culture skill. So, you know. Admirable. Not that great. Right. No problem. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you find someone, they're, they're going to be kind of, like, neutral to you. They're not, like, jumping to help you, but they're, you know, they're, they're ready to help. And, yeah. um, and you can have a, have a short conversation with these folks. Um, so, uh, maybe let's... Uh, JP, do you want to go to a you want to go to a breakdown? We'll pick up that conversation after. Yeah, yeah, that works out. Uh, I do okay. have a quick question. Do we know sure. our next mission, or have we just not gotten yes. it yet? Yeah, no, you you get it assigned to you basically as soon as you apply. Okay, and that's to go to three hundred four to. What's the yeah? To go, go to go to Vafai and find that uh, abandoned uh, experimental drive ship, and then oh, okay. bring the core back. Okay, so we have our first. Okay, cool. Yep. I, I wasn't yeah, sure well if, on your way. if we've got that or anything. Cool. Yep. All right, we'll take our first break of the night. Still have three hours left, and uh, we'll be right back after this quick break. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you soon.